Get ready to find the keys to living the life you always wanted to live. Reverend Steve James will share powerful keys to living the life that Jesus Christ came to make available. Well, God bless you all in the wonderful name of our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And boy, am I thankful to be with all of you this morning. I love you, and you're a big part of what goes on in my life. I'd like you to go to 1 Timothy chapter 2. 1 Timothy chapter 2. And the title of this teaching is Salvation for All. And in verse 4 of chapter 2, it says, Who will have all men? This is talking about God. God would have all men to be saved and come unto the knowledge of the truth. This is God's primary will for mankind, that they would be saved and come into a knowledge of the truth, an accurate knowledge of the truth, which means a knowledge of God's word. This is what I want to do. This is the thing that I want to do more than anything else is, is this word, this verse. This is what I think about every day. Monday through Friday, I come down here and I, I read, I study, I put teachings together. I put the podcast together. I do the emails. I do the newsletter. It's all to help people get born again, how to get saved. That's what I think about all the time. And that's what I, why I do these teachings on Sunday morning and Tuesday night is to help people to have the word, to have the word and have it in all its gusto. And I want to share a little bit about what happened to me on last, the Wednesday before last, the day before I left for Spokane, Washington. I was out driving and picking up riders and the first guy that I picked up was a family, a mother and a father and a boy, and they were on their way to a medical facility. But they were the first ones that I picked up, so I had a Bible teaching playing in my car. And he was finishing up his teaching, so I just let it play. I wanted to hear the ending. And then when he ended the, the teaching, the teaching goes, well, I want to thank you for something as he was talking. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. And the boy in the back seat goes, amen. <laughs> and then the mother and father go, amen. And then they start asking me, well, who is this and what's this all about? And so I told them, I said, well, this is a person that I know that I listen to Bible teachings. As a matter of fact, that's what I do. I teach people how to read the Bible. And so we talked for a while, just a little while. This whole ride only took like five minutes. And then they went into a, the medical facility. I didn't pray for them, but they were wondering about the fellowship. So I told them, I gave them a business card, and I says, if you want to know more, you can go here. I do podcasts and stuff. And if you need a ride, I'll give you a ride. I'll just go pick you up. And so that's how I left that. And then I'm driving, picking up riders. And I pick up this young man. And he gets into my car. And the first thing he tells me, he's on his way to a job interview. And then he starts to tell me that he got fired from his last job. Because, this is his words, because he was too good. And they, they promoted a person to the manager who was with him, you know, in position. And she was afraid that he would be a problem for him because he's such a good worker. And so she fired him for no particular reason. Just got rid of him, got rid of her competition. That's how he looked at it. So I talked to him. I, and, and as he was talking to me, he was telling me, I, I, I work hard. He says, I'm trying to get ahead in life. I'm trying to do things. And I said, you know, 
I can tell you how you can do this. He goes, how? I said, well, you ever thought of praying? And so we got into God's word and I was telling him, you know, if you ask God for help, you can get a job. You can get a job that will help you develop yourself to be the person that you've always wanted to be. And we talked for a while and I gave him a card and he thanked me. He was just super blessed. And he goes, thanks for sharing that with me. And I says, well, you can listen. If I was you, I'd listen to that first podcast. It's a good one, especially with young people trying to get, get ahead in life. So that was that. And then a little later in the day, I picked up this young man, got in the car, and we, you know, how the conversation started. We started with the weather. And I said, oh, it was such a great few days we had. The weather was so nice. And he goes, on and on. But he's, one of the things he said to me, he said, well, do you, do you believe in global warming? I said, well, I don't know if it's true or not, but I don't care and I don't worry about it. I said, there will be a global warming that when the third heaven and third uh, earth come about. I said, but right now, maybe there is, maybe there are not, but I don't care. I don't worry about it. I know that God's going to take care of me. And he, we started talking the word. And he's a senior at Bates College. Mm -hmm. And he goes, you know what I'm worried about? He says, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get a job after I spend four years here in college. I don't know what's going to happen. I says, well, I'll tell you what I would do. I'd start praying, asking God who to see and, and where you could use your talents. And God will show you places and things, and you can end up with a great job. God loves you and will take care of you. And then he, he stopped for a minute, and he looked at me, and he showed me his shoulder. And he had all these scriptures tattooed on his shoulder. And I couldn't see him all because he just went like this. He goes, what does God think about that? And then he starts telling me their scriptures. And he was told, he told me this too, that, you know, God wouldn't like that because you're messing up the temple of God, this type of thing, you know. So I told him, I says, you know what I think? What is God don't care. He doesn't care about that. God looks on my heart. And I started sharing the word. He goes, man, that is so cool. You know, God looks on your heart. God doesn't look on your tattoos. That has nothing or your hair or nothing else. And I gave him a card and says, look me up and do something. So I just thought it was interesting. Was, you know what? I thought, wow, what a great day. Hmm. I got to speak to three different people and all of them seemed to need to know the word. Now, what happens next? Well, that's not my problem in the sense that I don't, God is in charge, right? God is in charge. Take your Bible and go to Acts chapter two. And I want to look at this a little bit. Acts chapter two. I'm going to start in verse 37, but these are, is what uh, Peter says to these people after he teaches them the word. He does a, a sermon, he teaches them, uh, and they hear about salvation. And verse 37, he says, Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their hearts, and they said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, and men and brethren, what shall we do? That's a good question. That's what these different people, these different writers that I picked up asked. What shall we do? I'm trying hard and I'm not getting ahead is what two of them told me. Mm -hmm. One of them didn't say nothing about their situation. So I know nothing about it, but what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized. Every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission or the forgiveness of sins. And ye shall receive the gift of Holy spirit. Pretty wonderful, pretty mm. wonderful. Then verse 39 says, For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. You know what? Salvation is for all. 
That's why I, I titled my teaching. Salvation is for all. Everybody needs it. Everybody needs to be favored and have God's grace upon them. Look at verse 30, uh, 46 is where I want to pick it up. And they continued daily with one accord in the temple and in the breaking of bread from house to house, did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart. Once they heard the good news and then they got born again, this is what they did. Verse 47, praising God and having favor with all the people. That word favor is also translated sometimes grace. The same Greek word is translated both favor and Greek, uh, grace at different places in the Bible. I like the word favor because it helps my understanding. We are favored. We're not like everybody else in the world. We're favored. God takes care of us. We have good jobs, good homes, good cars, good everything because God favors us. It's in his word. And you know what it says here? They shared that favor with some of the people. It doesn't say that, does it? All the people. This favor can be for you. Someone comes up and says, how do I get a job? I tell them. I tell them exactly how they can get a job. I need a new apartment. How do I get it? I tell them exactly how they can get it. I don't, well, just hope and, you know, pray and see what happens. That's not what I say. I say, you can have this. Because God's word says so. That's why I tell them that. And then they can, these people that I talk to, they can go out and receive if they want to. Or they can learn more about it. It's just wonderful. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 3. But before you get that, I just want to put this out. In verse 47 of Acts, it says, And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Who adds to the church? The Lord, it says here. The Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Our job is to share the grace, share the favor. And then the Lord adds to the church. And that's the point I'm going to build on here in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 3. And in verse 4, I'm going to start. It says, for a while, one says, I am of Paul, and another, I am of Apollos. Are ye not carnal when you're thinking that way. What club are you guys with? Who then is Paul and who is Apollos, but ministers by whom ye believe, even as the Lord gave to every man? Who gave to every man? The Lord. But being a minister is cool. It's good to talk to people, right? And in verse 6, he says, I have planted... Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. Every time God gives the increase, we share the favor, we water, we plant, there's the increase. So then, neither is he that planteth anything, neither is he that watereth, but God that gives the increase. You see somebody, you speak God's word to them, and then they have some of God's word. Whose job is it to get them <clears throat> saved? God's. God works in their heart. God. And who's the next guy they meet? They might see me in Lewiston and then on search in such a place. And then they might see someone else that we don't even know who it is. And they say something else. And then... Someday, they run into one of us. So you don't know, but I've seen it firsthand. One plants, one waters, God gives the increase. Pretty cool. 
Look at 2 Corinthians when it comes to salvation. Chapter 5, and verse 14, it says, For the love of Christ constraineth us. And we know the Orientalism in constraining, right? That you ask three times for something. Constraining. It says, the love of Christ constrains us. You know what that means? God says, come on, do it. Do the word. Some guy comes by and witnesses to you, tells you a little bit of something. Says, come on, I'll tell you how you can get a job. I can tell you how you can get what you need. How about praying and asking God for help? Well, I wouldn't ask God for that. That's He's too big to worry about. And that's not true. God cares. We're his kids and we're favored. Come on, do the word. And then finally, you know what? He give in. He said, okay, God, I'll do it. All right, I'm going to try it. I'm going to pray and believe for that job, for that car, that apartment, for whatever it is, red drapes. <laughs> and you do it because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we were all dead. And that he, he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. Who's that? Christ. Jesus Christ. Therefore, henceforth, now we know man after the flesh. Yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth know ye him no more. Therefore, if a man be in Christ, he is a new creature, a new creation, Christ within you, Holy Spirit. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new, and all things are of God who hath reconciled us to himself by Christ Jesus. So you look what Jesus Christ did. All things are of God who hath reconciled us, me and you, to himself by his Son, Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. Who has the ministry of reconciliation? We do. So we can either give it or we don't have to. It's the truth. We got freedom of will. To wit, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them. Jesus Christ didn't go, that's wrong, that's wrong, that's wrong. He didn't impute their trespasses unto them. So we don't either. We just tell them, hey, salvation's available. You want some God's grace? You want to be, you want to be favored in life? You know, it says in... Uh, if you read Matthew chapter 6, it talks about all the things that people need, clothes, raiment, and all this. And at the end it says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and half of these things... Well, three quarters... What does it say? All these things. That's what I was saying. See, if you take the more abundant life out of the word of God, you're taking half the word out. I don't want to do that. I want to, I like being favored. We're favored. Cool. And we don't, you know, tell people about their faults. They don't, there is not a manifestation of discerning of faults. <laughs> That's not what we do. As a matter of fact, we don't care what they've done in the past. What is the difference does it make? We only want to know where they want to go. If they want to go fast and far with God, we can help them. Pretty neat. Yeah. So we do not trespass unto them and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. We have the word of reconciliation that can help people get saved. Yeah. Wow, what a privilege. Now then we are ambassadors for Christ as though God did beseech I take the italicized words out and it makes it easier to understand. It says, as though God did beseech 
by us, we pray in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. That's our prayer is that we'll find someone that we can reconcile to God. <coughs> For he, God, hath made him, Jesus, to be sin for us. That word for is a Greek word, hooper. It means substitute. Jesus Christ was sin for us. What a privilege we have. We didn't have to do it. Jesus Christ did it, and he did it as they nailed him to the tree. Pretty neat. Who knew no sin? Jesus never sinned. That we might be made the righteousness of God in him. People need to know that. The guy that was worried about the, his tattoos, mm -hmm. he needed to know that God doesn't care. God looks upon the heart. We are righteous because of what Jesus Christ accomplished. Verse chapter 6, verse 1. We then, as workers together with him, who? God. Remember, we share grace. The Lord adds to the church. Some water, some plant, God adds. So we are workers together with him. Beseech you also that you receive not the grace of God in vain. You got the favor of God. What are you going to do with it? Just do it in vain? Well, I don't want to use the grace of God. I, I'm pretty cool and I can make it happen myself. Or do you want to say, God did this and you can have it too. That's what I want to do. And you know something? The word of God is for everyone. Let's read verse 2. For he said, I have heard thee in time, in a time accepted, and in a day of salvation have I succored thee. Behold, now is the acceptable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. You know when the day of salvation is? Okay. Pretty cool. Can't beat it. Go to Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 2. I just want to read a little of this. And what we're going to see here, that salvation is for everybody. We're going to see that once again. We're going to start in verse 8. For by grace are ye saved. You know why you're saved? By grace, by favor. God just said, okay, I'll do it. Because of the accomplished works of Jesus Christ. By grace ye are saved, through faith or believing. And that not of yourselves, it is a gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works. See, we are created in Christ Jesus unto good works. Some of the good works must be utilizing the ministry of reconciliation and the word of reconciliation. Which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is what God's asked us to do. Do you have to do it? No. You can get born again and live lousy lives. You can. People do. Or you can tap into the resources for the more abundant life. You can continue to learn and read God's word, <coughs> excuse me, so that you can have a closer walk with God. It's available. Because I'm out driving and I pick up riders. <laughs> These are the questions that people have asked me. One of them was, what is the first thing that people need to know? And I've shared this before, but what is the first thing that people need to know? You know something, when you talk to people, you need to think about that. They don't need to know in-depth study of God's word and what these Greek, different Greek words and stuff need. They need to know how to get the job, get the car, 
get the apartment, get healed. They need to know how to tap the resources for the more abundant life. Where do they start? Hmm. They start by seeing, oh, Jesus Christ came. That the word of God is the will of God. The word of God is the revealed word and will of God. What's the first thing? When we talk to people, that's the thing. I feel bad for uh, Edward sometimes. Just a little low, Edward. But I feel bad. He's a new believer, and we're all seasoned believers, and we get into these heavy conversations that are pretty heavy at times, aren't they? Oh, yeah. <laughs> but he's trying to keep up. He's doing his best, right? But yeah. what? Yeah. Yeah. You know, he's doing his best, and we can't help what we want to talk about either. So we're, it's just life, I guess. It's like a family. In a family, there's adults and there's teenagers and there's adolescents and there's babies. So, pretty. Mm -hmm. But I was thinking about that question. We need to, you know, know how to get people started in understanding the word. Another question that people have asked me says, is it, is the Bible hard to understand and read being written so long ago? Someone asked me that one day. And I said, I, I said, sometimes, but we can teach them how to read the Bible. Mm -hmm. We can teach them in the verse, in the context, where it's been used before. We can teach them to whom it is written to. Biblical uses of words. Figures of speech and orientalisms. They need to know these things so that they can understand the Bible when they read it. These are the types of things that we can do. And another question that people have asked me is this, what type of people you want the word? Hmm. One guy asked me this, it really sort of floored me a little bit. But what he was saying was, is it the the drunks and the hobos and the homeless that need the word? That's what he was saying. What kind of people really need the word? Well, I'm going to tell you, everybody needs it. Everybody needs the word because without it, they struggle way too hard. They struggle way too hard, no matter how educated you are, no matter how much financial advantage you might have on someone. You struggle way too hard. It's a lot easier to, to read the word, understand it, believe it, and tap in to the grace of God or the favor of God. It's just much easier. So this is why I do what I do. I want to help people get the word. I want them to get the word so they can have benefit to their lives. Mm -hmm. So they don't have to struggle so hard. We're always going to have things that come up. But when they do come up, we handle them a little different than most of the people in the world. Most of the people in the world would handle it like, ah, what do we do? I get, you know, we go, okay, God, what do we need to do next? I mean, something happened here that isn't very good. So what do we do? How do we get out of this situation? And we ask God for help. We look at God's word. We read. We go to fellowships like this. We go to one another. And we figure it out with God and each other and the word. And then we are favored. God will take care of us. We just know that God has a way out. You know when God has a way out? All the time. He's got it. God's got a way out. God can make a way where there is no way. There is no river that's uncrossable. And so, I mean, it's really a pretty cool life. Well, dear God, I just thank you for your word. Thank you that we can continue to grow in our, the grace and in the understanding of your word. And I thank you for these things in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen.
The episode is complete, so head over to stevejanes.com for show notes. While there, sign up for our newsletter, grab the freebies, and check out all that Reverend Steve Janes has available. Steve has plenty to give, audio and video teachings, articles, blogs, and biblical study books, all there to help you continue to grow in God's grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. All keys to help you live the life you've always wanted to live.